Egyptian business. Okay, good evening, Tiger. We are at the stables. Now, just give us an update. Um, I took some video when we were out the other night and searching for Sabakwe. You know, it, and it was quite dark. Mm. But I think just get, give our, our viewers an update of what happened. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, as we are in, well, this is our almost summer and uh it's been it was raining we received like wonderful rain and then the marulas are everywhere now okay so it's ripping season so we have these wild elephants that are actually you know uh, breaking up into small groups from the reserve so we were out in the park elephants feeding is as usual then Sebakwe he picked up small of a young bull close by. Then he decided to join that wild bull. So he went with him and then we tried to follow up on him, but they were quite quick. You know, the, the young bull was running away from Sebakwe. Sebakwe wanted to catch up with him. So we couldn't run that fast to get the hold of Sebakwe and you know. So well when that happens, obviously, you need to let everybody know the situation that we also have an elephant that is running around and stuff like that. So the message was sent to the group, our communication group, and then actually Adin uh, responded if we needed help. And then I also, you know, recommended, recommended her to come and help, She'd just drive around the reserve, see if we can pick him up. But it was quite late, we couldn't see now. So um, the decision was made that we can continue the following morning searching for him. But on the other hand, we had faith that he could possibly come back, you know, because uh, where we are now, where the, the, uh, the stables are situated, um, we do have a couple of trees of marulas. So I knew, or, you know, we knew that he could come back. There was high chance of him coming back. So... We went back, we called it a night, uh, then half past two in the morning, as we discussed uh, with our team, I got up and then looked around to see if we can, you know, see him around, but he wasn't there. So I went back to bed, uh, then, you know, a few hours later, then I had, you know, movement. Then I thought, okay, that could be him. And then also I had our elephants rumbling endless, you know, they were like continuously rumbling, you know. So um, then I thought, okay, let me get out and see what happens, what's happening out there. And then I got out. Then finally I saw him, he was standing with a wild bull. Uh, the same wild bull that he went out with, he was with him, you know, picking up few marulas. But I didn't want to, you know, make any noises or provoke them, otherwise he was going to run away. So I waited until the sunrise. So then I sent a message to Adin saying, okay, you, we don't worry about Sipapwe, he's back now. Um, we're going to put him back into his stable, meet the others and stuff like that. So it was successfully done. We put him back into the stable. And then there he greeted the others, you know, trumpets were heard and everybody was excited that Sibakwe was back. As well as us, as carers, Sibakwe is our, you know, our most beautiful, handsome elephant, you know. So for him to spend out, I mean, one night in the, in, in the bush, we were like, no, what if this happened? What if he gets hurt? What if he gets involved in a fight with wild bulls and stuff like that? So all those kind of you know thinking they actually hunting you you thinking uh what's going to happen to him but we were quite excited to see him back um i know some people might ask why can't you just let him go i know people they ask such questions you know but the thing is sebago and them they are hand reared elephants so they've been hand reared by humans so the thing is 
if we let them go back into the wild here in Kapama, it's not going to work. The fact that Kapama is a private game reserve, and then you have people driving around, you know, game drive, you have people working in Kapama, maintaining roads and stuff like that. So, Sebakwe was hand reared, like I said. So, whenever he sees people, he's looking for attention. So, if he can't get what he's looking for, he might use force to get what he wants without realizing he's using force because he's always with people, he knows people. So, he, for him, he doesn't have fear for humans. So, that can become a problem with the people that are working within the reserve. So that's the reason why we can't let him go here in Kapama. But as Adin spoke to me about the reality of what we are doing here, we are looking at two to five years to come. You know, we need to come up with a plan or with a program that these elephants, they're not gonna be here forever. They need to go back to their reality, which is the wildlife. So what, how are we going to do it? So that's the next step that we're going to discuss and look at, see if we can come right on that. So the main idea, we are focusing on young elephants, those who probably need help most. Okay, so those are the, the elephants that we want to bring into our care so that we can rehabilitate them and also, you know, uh, take them back into the wild. But we need a plan. A plan that is, you know, uh, useful, the plan that is safe for everybody around, the plan that can work the best for everybody. So, uh, for the animals too, because at some point you can't just let them go like that, you know, they need a plan, you know, how are you going to introduce them back? Because as they know humans, they will always search for humans. So you can do it slowly, one step at a time, until they get to use to their life that they are you know, adapting in the world. So that would be you know, a great move to make. So yeah, we are working on that now, but at the moment, we can't do it here in Kapama. It's impossible. Thanks, Tiger. Great interview. Hi, Wellington. Hi. Hello, Joshua. Sorry. <laughs> just on this side. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> go, 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 go. I actually just want to take a video of them coming in. Oh, okay. So now you're always asking when the elephants are coming in, I actually don't want to be in the middle of their food, but I thought of just giving you a quick rundown. That is the first of them coming in. Because if I stand in the middle of all their food, they will see me as um, competition. And they won't like it. We've got Pisa and Tamisa there that's coming in. Come, 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 Pisa. Come, Pisa. Come, come, Dura. Come. Come, 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 the papa. Thank you, Lost. La tenda. Can I go through that side? Can I go through that side?
talk with having in lost <laughs> they lost lost <laughs> lost and talk with coming together <laughs> Hello, my girl. So yeah, that you can see them all going for the food. You can see Tokwe starting to kick there for Kumbura. And she can't come close to her food. So, come Kumbura. Buddha should actually go to that heap but hasn't there for anyone okay. they're locking us in here <laughs> So here you've got um, Sabakwe, Klasiri, and Sitombe. And then this one is Samapon, Zindoga and booby and that's the beautiful sunset and the dragonsburg